Hi there. In this short topic video, we're going to take a quick look at stock control charts. Don't forget there are three main types of stock or inventory, as stock is otherwise known. Three main types in a business, raw materials and components. Stock or production that's not yet complete, known as work in progress. And then finally, finished goods, finished products ready for sale. Stock control charts are particularly useful for raw materials and components, but also very useful for finished goods and finished goods and products. Let's have a look at how they work. To do so, let's uh, firstly think about why you might use a stock control chart. We already know that it's important for a business to manage the amount of stock that it holds, partly because holding stock has costs, the cost of storing it, managing it, securing it, and of course the, the potential cost of the stock becoming obsolete. So the overall objective of stock control is to maintain stock so that the total costs of holding stock are minimised. And that's why stock control charts come into play. To illustrate how the chart is constructed and how it works, let's imagine a simple example. We're running a hoverboard store selling hoverboard direct to consumers online. And we buy our hoverboards from a wholesaler in the UK who takes a few days, a week or so to send them to us when we've ordered them. How might a stock control chart work? Well, the stock control chart has a classic structure. The y-axis or the left-hand axis shows the units of stock held. In this case, the number of hoverboards that we have in our warehouse or stock room at the store. Along the x-axis, the bottom there, shows the elapsed time in weeks. Thinking about our stock of hoverboards, in our case, we know that the maximum that we can hold at any one time because of the limitations of the size of our storeroom is 800 units, 800 hoverboards. That's our maximum level. However, we would like to make sure that we always have at least 200 hoverboards in stock, which is known as our minimum level, just to be able to handle any unusual orders or perhaps to take account of delays in supply from the wholesaler just to be safe, the minimum quantity we want to hold in stock is 200. And therefore 200 is what you would know as the buffer stock. We don't want stock to fall below 200. Of course it might do, but ideally we don't want it to. We want to organize stock control so that it doesn't fall below 200. Well, we know from our sales that demand for hoverboards here is quite predictable for this stock control chart. We know that uh, we sell about 300 a week. In other words, if we start with 800, we know that we'll be down to 200 within two weeks by the end of two weeks. So that if we then add some more stock back up to 800, demand will mean that the stock will continue to fall for the next two weeks, reaching 200 again. We add some more stock back up to 800 maximum. Demand comes in again. We add some more stock. Demand comes in again. You can see how this stock control process works. We always add back up to our maximum level, knowing that ideally we don't want stock to fall below 200 hoverboards. So how does the stock control chart work? Well, what we need to do is to set what's known as the reorder level, the point at which the stock control system automatically places an order with the wholesaler to send some more stock. And it's not going to be 200, is it? Because it's almost sure that the wholesaler will take a little time to take our order, process the order and get the stock to our place, to the store. So the reorder level is usually set at a level above the minimum stock quantity. And you can see that on the screen there, we've set the reorder level, the level at which we start to, or we place the extra order for the replenishment stock, we've set it at 400 units, 400 hoverboards. And why is this? Because there is what's known as a lead time, the time between the supplier receiving the order and delivering it. So we can see this on the screen. The lead time is around about a week, isn't it? Just under a week. If we order when the stock reaches 400, by the time the stock comes in, the if the lead time is as expected, we will be just about reaching the 200 limit, the 200 minimum number of hoverboards. So on the screen now, we've displayed the key concept of a stock control chart, the maximum level, the minimum level, the reorder level, the level at which you place your replenishment order, 
which takes account of the lead time, the time between placing the order and actually receiving the stock. So just to summarize, therefore, the key parts of the stock control chart. The maximum level is the maximum level of stock a business can hold or wants to hold. In our case, 800 hoverboards. The minimum stock level is the minimum amount we want to hold. Assuming that uh, we can continue to sell demand as it comes in, we want to have that buffer. 200 units is our minimum stock level. We set a reorder level. This is the trigger point at which we place the next order with the supplier. On our chart, that was 400. And the lead time, and this is in many cases the uncertainty with stock control, is the time it takes between placing the order with our supplier and receiving the stock. And on our chart there, just to go back, it looks like looking at the x-axis, that's just under one week. There we go, a stock control chart. A classic stock control chart to show the key parts of stock control. Of course, how much the stock to order will be determined and influenced by a number of factors. We've mentioned one already, that lead time. How long does it take the supplier to deliver the order? If, in general, if you have a high lead time or if you have uncertain lead times, maybe an unreliable supplier, that would normally suggest that you would set a higher reorder level than in other situations. Also, the implications of running out of stock. If stock outs are very damaging, if we lose business by not having the stock uh, ready to sell, then that would also suggest a higher reorder level. And finally, of course, the nature of demand for the product. In our chart there, we saw a pretty consistent level of demand day by day for the hoverboards. But of course, demand, as we know, can be fairly unpredictable. And that too will influence how much stock you reorder. When you look at stock management, as we've done in other videos, you can see that there are some advantages of holding low levels of stock, a, min a low minimum level of stock. Um, for example, that reduces the amount of stock holding costs and it also reduces the risk that the stock becomes obsolete. And it's very consistent with operating what's known as lean production. However, there are advantages in setting quite a high level of minimum stock, depending on the business. In particular, the business is better able to handle unexpectedly strong demand from customers. And of course, it reduces the risk that you have a stock out where you don't have stock to handle customer demand. That's been a brief introduction to and an explanation of stock control charts.